Well, uh, it, it was a very interesting article and it was based on the fact uh, that should we reflexively stop eating things which produce gas? Uh, and, and the answer is no, because gas is a natural byproduct of fermentation of these carbohydrates present in some vegetables by the gut bacteria. So it's a, it's a normal phenomena where bacteria will break down uh, carbohydrates and will produce gas and we pass this gas. The idea was that, that just because we produce gas, we shouldn't try to reduce foods which might contribute to production of gas. When we eat, there's going to be a lot of simple sugars, there's going to be a lot of uh, proteins which we can absorb even before the microbes get to see the food. Okay. A lot of the carbohydrates which we cannot digest uh, get pushed down to the colon where they interact with the gut microbes and as a result the highest density of these microbes is in the colon. So, so what they are feeding on is essentially what we can digest and it's beneficial for them because they get food and it's beneficial for us because we wouldn't have been able to digest that by ourselves so the microbes digest them and actually provide um, nutrients which provide energy sources which are beneficial for us uh, so it's a mutualistic relationship where you know we help them and they help us and in fact they do a lot of important functions for us such as vitamin biosynthesis you know nutrient utilization and some of these molecules which the microbes produce also help boost our immune system so if we simplify our diet to a level where you really don't have as much undigested carbohydrates available to the microbes they are going to start either feeding off of the host carbohydrates which is present in the mucus lining of the gut or they're not going to make it um, in the gut so over a period of time we might actually lose the diversity of these microbes which are present and as we know, any time we lose a diversity of our ecosystem, it's more vulnerable to attack by other more pathogenic bacteria. So that's why it's in our best interest to, to maintain the diversity of this microbial ecosystem. And in fact, just by eating some of these carbohydrates, not only do we stimulate a bacteria which can directly use this carbohydrate, but it also provides a downstream revenue of nutrients to other bacteria in the gut and allows the whole ecosystem to flourish. It's, it's amazing how each of these groups within the Center for Individualized Medicine is actually codependent on the others because we understand that the microbiome is, is definitely a target for developing personalized therapies which could then potentially be used in the clinomics. But at the same time, when you look at either epigenetics or pharmacogenomics, uh, we, uh, we understand that, that uh, epigenetic changes in the host can in fact influence what microbes are present <clears throat> and they can then determine if a certain epigenetic change would actually lead to disease or not. So, so we are closely working uh, with the epigenetics program on, on a couple of projects uh, trying to understand how uh, host epigenetic changes influence the microbiome and vice versa. Can the microbiome cause epigenetic changes um, in the host?